today we're going to be talking about cleaning, sterilizing and sanitizing. This is going to be useful not just for making hot sauces, which is what this is primarily going to be aimed at, but also if you're brewing beer, making wine, that sort of thing. So let's get started. The first step in the process is cleaning. This part of the process should be very familiar to you. You do it every day after you've eaten dinner, you clean your plates and your knives and forks. But essentially what you're doing in this step is you want to get rid of any obvious debris, any obvious dirt, and just give it a good clean. To do that, we're just going to use some dishwashing liquid, fairy liquid, whatever you have in your cupboard. You're going to put that into some warm water and give that a bit of a mix around. And then just put all your bottles inside there, any of the, the caps that you're going to be using as well. You want to stick those in as well as any other equipment so if you're going to be starting a new fermentation you might want to give these a clean as well so stick that in and spoons as well as jars and the caps so these just need to have a good old clean you can use a bottle brush as well, and this is especially useful for bottles that are really soiled. So if you are reusing bottles, then you're definitely gonna need one of these. But I would recommend getting new bottles each time you make a sauce. It's just not worth the risk of using used bottles and not cleaning them properly. Once you've given these a good clean and you've made sure there's no debris in there. And when we talk debris, we're talking about dirt, but we're also talking about any chips of glass potentially that might be in there during the manufacturing process. You just got to be really careful. So make sure those are properly washed out and then put it into some fresh water and rinse it out so we don't have any other bubbles in there. So the cleaning part of the process is pretty straightforward. Just make sure all debris, any oils that might be on the bottle during the manufacturing process have been cleaned off make sure that everything is lovely and clean including things like your blender and any anything that you might use during the process next up we're going to talk about sterilization we've got two ways to do that we can do it via heat which i've got a pot over here which we're going to fill with water or you could do it using chemicals so I choose to use VWP you can use diluted bleach as well but my preference is VWP this stuff works great about three or four teaspoons per gallon and you soak all your stuff in there and you've got no problem there are a couple of reasons for that number one is the amount of equipment that I'm cleaning it's a lot easier to use something like that in a large bucket rather than trying to boil it up over here in a, in a pot I just don't have enough space the other reason is because a lot of my equipment actually is plastic. For example, this thing here would just melt. Actually it has. I've put this through the dishwasher before and it basically just <laughs> collapses on itself. But you can actually use the dishwasher if you have a high heat setting instead of doing what we're doing here. So that is an option as well. But otherwise we just boil up some water, put mainly the glass items in here. You can put your caps in there as well of your bottles. You can put them in, but like I said, I prefer to use VWP. We're gonna be taking the VWP and we're gonna be putting about three or four teaspoons inside here. After about half an hour to an hour of soaking, we're ready to then rinse this off and you need to rinse this off thoroughly this is not food safe you don't want to be drinking it or eating it same thing as with bleach if you do use bleach but uh, give it a good rinse and you'll be perfectly fine once you've rinsed these all off you're actually ready to use them you could use them straight away however most of the time you're cleaning these off long before you actually get to bottling or processing your sauce so these will be sitting for about an hour or so and that's where sanitization comes in you basically are refreshing the sanitary effect of what you've just done in terms of the sterilization for sanitization what i use is star sand so you've often seen me using this bottle when i'm doing my sauces and things like that 
And what that is, it's something like this, chem sand. Star sand is quite difficult to get hold of, but this is exactly the same stuff. And what it is, is a no rinse acid sanitizer. Now what that means is, what it sounds like, you don't need to rinse it. It is food safe if you dilute it correctly, if you dilute it to the proper dilution ratio that is recommended. And that is beneficial because every time you rinse, you are potentially causing a problem again with your bottles, with your uh, caps and things like that, because you could be introducing something back into the mix. So this stuff here, not having to rinse it, means that it's a lot safer. Like I said, it is an acid sanitizer, which means that it uses acidity to do the sanitization. This is effectively around about three or below three on the pH scale. And actually that's what we use to make sure that it is still effective. I've mixed this up quite a while back. And uh, what we need to do is just make sure that it is still safe. So we're gonna test it with our pH meter. So we can see there the pH of this is 2.3. So what I do to mix up my star sand or chem sand is I use a five liter bottle of water. So make sure it is bottled water. Tap water will mean that this stuff will not be as effective for as long. This here I mixed up quite a while back and it's still like you see is perfectly fine. So bottled water. And there we go, that's ready to use. So I use this liquid to not only use in a spray bottle like this, but I also use it to soak things in and to clean things. So typically when I'm doing a, a day of making my hot sauces and bottling, I will pour some into this thing over here, which is very handy. I use this for home brewing as well. That's what it's actually meant for, uh, cleaning beer bottles and wine bottles. But works just as well with these guys so you just do this and it sprays on the inside I would recommend just putting the the bottleneck in the liquid as well I also go and place all the small bits inside the actual container here and that just lets them soak so when I'm ready to use them they're all ready to go now what about when you're doing a fermentation same ideas I use some of my star sand that I've pre-mixed and we obviously have our bottles and everything that we've cleaned and sterilized, but at this stage, they might have been sitting for a while. So we need to make sure that we give them a last minute sanitization. And that's to ensure that we don't get any of the bacteria that's gonna start in here. We're gonna make sure that we're starting off with the best chance possible for our fermentation. So what I do is all around the lid there, all on the inside as well, give it a good coating, and then shake out any excess and I do the same with these things. Especially concentrating on things like the end here, as well as on the lid. Just shake out any of the excess and straight away make sure that you use this. If you're gonna wait any length of time, like five, 10 minutes, I would do this again. You don't want to let this sit for too long. There's always a chance that something could get on it. And it's just been ultra cautious, but it definitely helps with creating a nice, safe fermentation. This is the process that I use. And of course you can do it your own way, but there are three core components that you need to do regardless of how you're gonna do them. And that is cleaning, sterilization, and sanitization. So I take every step possible to make sure that these sources are as safe as possible. And I also take every step that I can to make sure that my fermentations are successful. Because you can see behind me, I have you know my greenhouse, my polytunnel. I spend all year long growing my chilies. The last thing I wanna do is go and waste a batch because that happens to get a little bit of uh, mold or some nasty bacteria or pathogens inside my fermentation. So I take every step necessary that is safe and that is recommended by our health and safety body in the UK. 
and I suggest that you look up the rules in your country as well, especially if you're going to be selling your sauces. Do a lot more research than just watching my videos. My videos are a good jumping off point potentially, but you need to go and speak to your local health and safety uh, department. I went through many, many, many months of work to get myself to a point where I was comfortable to sell my sources. I am very confident in doing what I do today because of that process and I'm thankful for it. It might seem frustrating to have to go through some of the steps you need to go through with your local council, with your local government body, but it is a necessity. You don't want to risk hurting other people with things you're making. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's a long time coming. A lot of people have been asking for it. It might seem quite simplistic, it really is, but it is essential. Make sure you follow those steps, cleaning, sterilization, and sanitization. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and stay spicy.